Welcome to the Sports Card Talk Show. To the Sports Card Talk Show. Sports Card Talk Show with Kevin Anderson and Lauren Walker, the Skull Brothers. Welcome to episode 103 of the Sports Card Talk Show. Um, rolling with the interviews still. We got we just got them lined up now for a while. Yeah. So yeah, we're gonna kind of drop some other shows that we do usually, and it's all gonna be interviews for a little bit. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Today we have Scott with with uh, from Big D for Life on uh, YouTube. Yep. Um, you can also find him on Facebook. He's part of the Super Collectors group. Yeah, I don't know the exact name. We'll, we'll, we'll get that name. That. We'll yeah. get that name from him. We just know exactly. that it's a group of Super Collectors. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yep. yeah. Because he is a super collector. Yeah, he is. Probably should get him on the line and find out. And start talking to him, huh? Ring ling ding dong. <laughs> All right, we got Scott on the line. Thanks for joining us today. Appreciate you having me, guys. How are y'all? Well, awesome. Yeah, we're doing good. Sun shining, can't go wrong. You know, up in this northern part of the country, we're still cold, but it's sunshine. I think we're supposed to hit 50 today. We so. might. <laughs> we might. <laughs> good deal. Yeah, it's nice here. Um, me and the family, we, we grilled out last night. It was like 70, 75 degrees. Oh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> we get a few weeks of that up here. <laughs> yeah. it's, a, it's a little chillier today, but um, it's been nice. Um, me and my son are going to go through football probably after this. And uh, I was talking with some other guys from, I guess y'all are theoretically north of me. But yeah, so we grilled out. I don't know if y'all call that a barbecue. But that's what we did. That's what we did last night. So, yeah, we uh, we don't do it very often because we don't get the nice weather. No, I think we just say we're going to grill tonight. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I sometimes though you will do. I've I've actually grilled in the middle of oh, winter yeah, I too. Have to. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just a quick run out the door, flip flip the flip, meat, run and back, back, back in. <laughs> okay, go back in. Yeah. Even yeah, if it's yeah. snowing, you can you can still grill. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. <laughs> Well, um, I think we'll dive into to what got you uh, started on the YouTube channel and, and how long you've been doing it and and uh, your experience with starting it, I guess. Okay. Uh, if you want to talk yeah. about how long you've been collecting, I mean, it, it, go back yeah. as, as you feel comfortable, you know? All right. Yeah, I can. I think I can probably kind of integrate those two things. Um, first of all, thanks for having me on. Um, I, I haven't seen all of y'all's interviews, but I've seen a lot of them. And I, I just, I think y'all do a really good job of kind of this group of group of guys or group of guys and gals that you've done a really good job of kind of telling that story. And that's, what's been interesting and intriguing to me. Um, I just, I enjoy what y'all do. So I appreciate that. And I appreciate y'all having me on. Uh, well, thanks. I was excited when you said, Hey, you want to be on? And I'm like, yes, I do. <laughs> nice. Um, so for me, um, I kind of start like collecting, um, probably a, a similar story as a lot of us. I collected in the eighties. Um, I started collecting football probably, uh, 84, 85, somewhere in there. And, you know, interestingly enough, and I didn't realize it at the time, but I was a set collector and didn't know it. So I was like, you could go to flea markets and you buy all these singles at flea markets. And I was, I was taking singles and combining them with packs that I had bought and was completing sets. So I had like, I had like at that time, like 1980 as throughout the time I collected like 80 through 80 or 81 through 89. Like I had complete hand built sets. Oh, nice. You know, I kept them in a box and I would top load like uh, the Jerry Rice rookie and stuff like that. Um, and somehow I'm not going to get into how, but I lost as an adult, I lost my entire collection. So, um, I guess, you know, so I collected football up until late 80s, early 90s, and 87, I started collecting baseball. And one of the things we talked about prior, and I'm just going to go into it, uh, you asked about the San Francisco Giants. And about 86, 87, I started collecting baseball, didn't have a favorite player. Um, I spent a lot of time with my uncle. He was a huge Braves fan. 
So I loved Dale Murphy. Dale Murphy. <laughs> they, they were on TNT all the time. Mm -hmm. here. And um, so I already liked the Braves, but I don't know. I, I was a teenager and just kind of branching out on my own. And I think I just saw Will Clark on a card, like, like 87 Don Russ. <laughs> yep. And he had the black under his eyes and stuff. And, you know, this really cool looking batting stance. And that's how I became a Giants fan. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I, just, I just fell in love with Will Clark. And, and at that time, the Giants were starting to get really good. And they went to that, um, they went to the World Series in 89. And Clark had a, a league championship series in 89 against the Cubs, like monster series. Um, so it was amazing, like watching your favorite player, like he was one of the best players in baseball for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. You know, the, it, it was incredible. And um, then he got Clark eventually got traded to the Rangers. I still followed Clark. I still followed the giants and I'm still a giants fan. Um, but with the cards did baseball, I think like a lot of people, you know, into the early nineties and then I became, you know, 19, 20, 21, I started doing other things and fell out, you know, um, for many years and was kind of that guy that occasionally you're in Walmart or somewhere and you buy one pack and you thumb through it and you stick it in a drawer or something. <laughs> and then, you know, that was it. And round about 2016, I had a buddy of mine. He's, he's got a YouTube channel also. He's Bronx Bombers cards, best friends since those days we collected together in the eighties, we traded cards. He's bugging me, man. He's like, man, you need to check these cards out. You need to look at these cards. He's showing me all these Derek Jeters. And I was like, dude, I can't believe you have spent that much money on cards. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because we all kind of got burnt in the eighties or at least oh, thought yeah. we thought we did, you know, because we, at, at that time, I think we all thought like, man, this Jose Canseco rookie is going to, buy my pay, buy me a car or something. And it didn't turn out that way. Um, so I was looking at him like he was crazy. And in 2016, the Cowboys, they had a good year. They had Dak and Zeke and it kind of piqued my interest a little bit. And I started looking around on eBay and I bought a couple cards. And ever since it's been, it's just steamrolled like into what <laughs> now. You got um, you got the you tasted the crack and you're addicted. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the hobby the hobby has changed so much, and it took me like there was this huge learning curve of understanding just just parallels and numbered cards and all of that stuff was new to me, and and just figuring that out and understanding it and you know understanding the way the hobby works now and graded cards and cards and um, it, it was, it's been a blast, but it, it was just completely different. Um, and YouTube, <clears throat> I guess about that same time, I was trying to learn these products. I'm like, well, I didn't know what to buy. Um, what's worth money. And, 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 and I'm honestly, I, I don't, I'm not doing this to make money. Um, I do sell some cards so I can buy cards I want, but. Uh, my, my wife might think I'm doing it as an investor. <laughs> um, this, this is, this is for fun and it's nostalgic to me. Um, but, oh, I, so I started watching YouTube and Packer cards, 87 and Smith SC and, um, these guys that crack packs, uh, Timmy G and just to, to see what was in packs. And I would say, oh, that's cool. I want to buy some of that. And um, eventually said, I, I was like, well, I want to do that. So like we talked about earlier, I wanted to be like Packer Cards 87. I, I had no idea that it would become as much about community as it is. And not to say he's not about community too, but really the reason I do this now, what keeps me going, or 
not keeps me going, but what intrigues me and what's fun about it now is just the interaction. You know, um, I, I was talking to Jimmy guns. See, I I'm rambling. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was talking to Jimmy guns one night and he says, you know, we're, we're all grown ups, and you can't find friends like you could when we were in the sixth grade. But mm-hmm. this, right. this has become a way as adults, we've all got our busy lives and we're doing our things we're doing that I'm making friends. We have similar interests and it's like, it's in that way, it's like being a kid again. So that's kind of what it is to me. I that, think, um, just to piggyback on that, when Lauren and I decided to do this, we're like, well, we like cards. We'll show off some cards. We'll have a little fun doing it. We'll talk to some people. And if people watch, great. And then all of a sudden, next thing you know, we're like talking to people on Instagram and texting them outside of it. And, you know, the relationships that we're getting are, that was like, I don't want to say surprising part, but the unexpected part, you know, is like, Wow. I, I I talk to people about it. I'm like, yeah, my friend out in California or my friend in North Carolina or my friend, like, wow. I don't say my Instagram friend or my YouTube friend, nothing like that. It's, hey, my buddy over here or my buddy over there or whatever. I, you know? I got friends all over the country now. Yeah. Know? And and um, I, I was telling my wife that this morning, that, you know, that it's, it's, um, it is hard to, I don't make new friends, you know, I, I go to work, I'm with my family, you know, I go to my son's games. Maybe I'm, you're, I'm, I'm cordial with some other kid's dad or something, but this, this is, this is, this is my community, man. And, um, I will say, and I, I had a few things in my head that I did want to say, and I don't know if there, anybody else has talked about, but when I first started guys like, um, Pepino man, um, Ricky Russo, like Pepino, man, we're friends, man. I, that's, he's my boy. Like we, we talk, you know, um, but at that time in 2016, 17, he was like an entertainer icon to me, <laughs> even for this guy to like recognize that I commented on his video. I was like, Oh man, that's awesome. You know, and so social media, you know, because we started on YouTube and we did YouTube like I met a lot of these guys on YouTube and that's all you knew was their YouTube channel. A lot of people don't show their face. It's just the cards. That's all you knew. And and somebody created a Facebook group. And I'm sure there was many out there before the one I got in. Mm-hmm. But brought that brought all the guys that I knew onto social media together. And we started seeing each other and interacting and like you're seeing pictures of their family and their lives completely was a game changer as far as the the community aspect of it. And yeah, uh, it's, it's been awesome, man. It's been a super awesome experience. It, honestly, it's been for me, it's been absolutely life changing. I, it really has. I don't know what I would be doing as a hobby. It's, it's, you know, you, like, you, like we were talking about the friendships and stuff that we made. I've lived, I moved to Duluth uh, just over 20 years ago. And in those 20 years, Kevin is the only friend that I, he's the only person I would call a friend. I'm, and, uh, you know, I, I have like uh, uh, relationships with the girl at the gas station, the gas station yeah. girl or whatever. You know, you talk to him for the couple minutes that, someone ain't standing behind you in line or whatever. And, but, uh, yeah, you just, uh, and then doing this, it's like, I feel like I've made more friends in the last six, eight months just by doing this. I know people better in, uh, all over the country than I, than I know in, in the <laughs> right <in> neighborhood. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and at, the, at the same time, you know, and I think you'll see what is unique to a lot of guys on here. You two are really lucky. Because, you know, you've got a buddy, you've got a buddy that's into collecting that's so close to you. Y'all can hang out and look at cards together and you can show him your stuff. And, you know, to have that is a lot. A lot of us don't. I mean, my wife, I, she'll look at some of my cards. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> nice here. <laughs> Ever since, like, I handed her a card that was in a one touch and she's like being like, I was like, whoa, be careful. <laughs> She's like, 
She's like, I don't want to hold them anymore. For it. But, um, <laughs> you know, it's cool. It's cool to have someone to share your collection with. And I think the uh, Ian that was it Ian that y'all were talking to last night. Yeah. yeah. I think he said, you know, he, you don't want this, but to become like, you're just getting a bunch of stuff and putting it in a box and putting it away. Right. That's what YouTube, uh, the social media and, you know, just having somebody to share your collection with. Cause I don't want to just put my stuff in a box and stick it in a closet. And right. What happened to my collection in the, in the eighties, you know? So. I, um, my mostly mine are all over the place now. Cause ever since I, I had them pretty well put away and over in my storage unit. <laughs> And since we've been doing this show, just been going over there and grabbing boxes and I'm all <laughs> over here for to create content, you know, and um and now they're all over my house again and I <laughs> driving me nuts. But um getting on in we got on we both jumped on Instagram two, three years ago and it was just snapped pictures and it was like Instagram was our display case for our cards. And you did, and you were excited that you got like twenty thumbs up on a <laughs> on a on a picture of one of your cards, and I would go around and I, I'm I'm a Viking fan, hardcore. So I wouldn't like anybody's uh, Kyler Murray, you know, that, well, whoever the big guy was back then. But no, I was only liking Viking cards, and people would be like, "Comment, nice card," and I'd be like, "Thank you." Like I was not in, I was not interacting really with the community at all. Yeah, I just show off my cards. And just, uh, I, I, I mean, I'm kind of, I was like this to social media. I, I only joined Facebook cause my kid, my kid was on Facebook and I wanted to, you know, do, you know, and he's, he's in a rock band. So I would, you know, they would do stuff on their, on their, you know, he had his rock band Facebook page. So I wanted to, you know, go and like his stuff, watch their videos and stuff like that. And, and, uh, but I didn't like, I didn't have, I, it was a stretch to get you to do this. Yeah, I, I did not. I did not want to like post pictures of myself on Facebook or anything. I wanted to be kind of socially. I wanted to be Ron Swanson from Parks and Rec and be like, oh. I hear you. I hear you. I mean, I, I don't know how many videos it was until like I turned the camera around and you know showed my face. And I mean, I really had to think about, man, do I really, do I really want to do that? You know, do I really want to show? I really want to show my face and um, yeah, it's, it's putting yourself out there, you know um, it's worth it though. Yeah. Yeah. Just it's, real quick. I just wanted to say that when we started ours and, and not that this is about us, but just talking about putting yourself out there, we decided from the get go that we were turning the cameras around and we were going to talk to people about it because everybody yeah. is opening, but I couldn't, I couldn't put, I could tell you whose hands they were, but I can tell you <laughs> what they look like, you know, and that's kind of where yeah. we started this. And not that we're the, you know, the first people to ever think of it. I know lots of people do it, but that's what we decided. We're like, we're turning the camera around. Let's do it. I I, I just saw, and y'all had a video. I you, you both were sitting there just like you are now, and y'all were going through cards, and you're like, oh, look at this, what I got. And to me, that was just super, that's super cool. You're just kind of like recording yourself doing what me and my buddy Mike do, you know, mm -hmm. showing each other cards and you're like, oh yeah, man, I like that. You know, <laughs> like, that's awesome, man. I mean, I, I think it's unique and it's different and, and, and the interviews, you know, and, and I get it. Like you're saying, you're not the first person to turn the camera around, but the, the interviews and, um, you know, the, the takes on the, on the community and the backstories. Um, it's, it's really good, man. I, I, I really like it. Well, thanks, man. Um, so now, okay. I, I want to jump in quick and, uh, you know, Dustin actually shared a video with me last night and it was, uh, D and D's. I can't remember the name D and D and, yeah. and it's a, it was a video uh, introduce it, it was basically a how to become a super collector uh, and, and you were on it yeah and, and I found I was like I, I texted Dustin after I was done and I'm like I'm gonna have to watch this thing a few times <laughs> to uh, I mean it's just a really really good well done video on how to store your cards 
how to connect with the community. And you come in and you have that, uh, the uh, spread. And I'm like, that one I'm definitely going to have to keep on pausing because I haven't done a spreadsheet in like 25, 30 years. I've, yeah. <laughs> so so uh, I'll tell you, I've had, I've, I've, I've had a lot of different guys reach out and want to do a spreadsheet and we figured it out to get, I mean, I'm not a spreadsheet expert. There's some things in my sheet that I even said like, Hey, if somebody knows how to do this better, tell me. <laughs> there's all these different formulas. And, but um, I've had a lot of guys reach out and say, and ask me, you know, how to, how to do it or, and, and we've done it. Um, the super collecting thing. Um, get, just, I, I want to, can you give me the, can you say the name of that, of that group? Is that something that people can find? Yeah. Into? Um, it's uh, it's super, so there's a Facebook group and it's called Super Collectors Unite. Okay, I be, I believe is it, and um, I'll send you a, a link link to it or something too. Um, so the way that kind of started, there's there was already several guys in the community that are these massive super collectors. Some that stood out to me were uh, Tops eighty five four hundred one. That's Nate. He collects Barry Bonds. Yeah, that's he. His that was great how he explained how to com connect with the community and stuff. And, and at the time when we started that Super Collectors group, Nate was pushing towards five thousand, and I had like two hundred and fifty Emmets or something. <laughs> we started talking about it, and it was uh, Bronx Bombers called me up. He said, "Hey, let's race to a thousand. He collects Jeter. Dustin collects." Uh, Kirby and then Eloy collect collect collects Barry Sanders. And we're like, yeah, we'll race to a thousand. We'll start doing these videos and we'll show our pickups and see who can get to a thousand first. Me. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think I think it was actually Eloy, but I think Eloy might have already been at a thousand. <laughs> I'm not I'm not sure how fair that was. I'm at but, 380. Three nine nine, three four hundred. Oh, look what you yeah. see! Thousand. <laughs> what? <laughs> um, but we we started doing that and doing that with the videos, and then Dustin came up with the idea for the Facebook group. And um, man, it's it is it's become a really cool group, you know. And it it's all these guys. We we came up with some loose parameters of what makes you a super collector. I think it's two hundred and fifty unique cards. Uh, of a particular player and you can kind of, we all kind of come up with our own parameters on what we want to call unique. Um, and they, he keeps a running list in there of where everybody is with their counts. And really people just share their collections. Like you said on Instagram, when you're sharing photos of your cards, um, people share, you know, pickups and links to their videos and it's become a really it's a cool group. And the one thing I'll say about that super collectors group <laughs> and not knocking some of the other groups, like I'm in that card family group and man, we, uh, the banter in the card family group is a why <laughs> that group is not limited to cards. Like there's no telling what will be said in that group, but with the super collectors group, I mean, it's really zeroed in on super collecting. That's what we talk about. There's, we're not selling in there. You know, it's it's specifically just showing off your collection, sharing ways you collect with the spreadsheets and whatnot, and or however people track. Um, it's 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 focused, and we've had a lot of guys join, and it's fun. I think everybody that has gotten in there is has enjoyed it. It's unique. It's something different. Um, just to add on, so when I got back into this in 2016, I was focusing on cowboys, but really I was collecting everything. <laughs> <laughs> right. Especially I was like, if I, I wanted rookies of everybody. And I learned over the past couple of years that uh, I can't, it's like almost I can't do both. I can't have the cowboys collection that I want and still collect every hall of fame player. So that's what the super collectors thing has kind of done for me is I've really narrowed my focus on my collection and um, I'm much more specific about what I collect now. So you had 
you alluded to it, and obviously we know, but if for somebody that doesn't know, what is your super collection? You mentioned the name, but yeah, what? Emmett 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 Smith, right? Yeah, um, I I was thinking about that before this video. I love Emmett, I but I don't necessarily know that he's my favorite player of all time. Um, I, it's between Emmett and Tony Dorsett, and man, mm -hmm. I love Danny White. Like, um, you know, it's, but I don't, I guess when it, we decided to start doing this, I looked at my boxes. I said, well, I got a lot of Emmett's. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. And I mean, you know, he's Emmett, he's a great player. I think he's a good person. He's a good representative of, of my team. So yeah, that's, that's where I went was with, with Mr. Smith. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, now, you know, my goal was to hit a thousand. I hit a thousand and got a couple care packages in and like, boom, I'm almost up to 1100. <laughs> like, man, I'm just, I guess I'll just keep going, but I think I'm going to try and pick, I mean, I have a pretty big Cowboys collection too. Um, but I think I'm going to pick another player and try to get to a thousand again. Oh, are you still nice. entering them into the spreadsheet then? Or are you done? Doing yeah, I definitely still update my spreadsheet. Um, keep account and it's 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 a challenge i mean you know getting that spreadsheet initially set up especially if you've already got a ton uh -huh. Uh -huh. um it's it takes some time um but once you get it set up it, it really been tracking and, and the great thing about technology and where we are today with google docs is shareable so uh -huh. i i share my sheet with you know dustin's got it there's, there's several guys that have access to my sheet. If they're at a card show and they see an Emmett, they can pull it up on their phone. He don't have it. And, you know, we, we end up picking a lot of cards up for each other like that. So That's really cool. Yeah. I feel like in that video, you say that you were at a card show and you picked up, I don't know how many Eli's for the Eli collector. <laughs> he, he didn't have very, he only had a couple hundred at the time. So I'm guessing it's a lot easier to find the card <laughs> whenever the count is that low is yeah. you guys have thousands of unique cards out there yeah it's, when you when you start getting into the thousands it's harder to find yeah, yeah. even like kirby you know i forget the number justin dustin said but there's like 6500 kirby pocket cards whereas a player that played in a different era because they produced so many different products i think emmett has like 12,000 different cards so it's harder to get the unique Kirby Puckets just because there was less of them, you know? Well, well you know that uh, I heard just in the matter of from Cam Newton to Kyler Murray, Cam Newton's rookie year, he had 600 and some odd unique cards made. Yeah. Kyler, Kyler Murray last year, over 2,000, like 23, 2,400 wow. unique cards made of Kyler Murray in one year. Yeah, by the time he retires, he'll have a hundred thousand unique cards. Oh, yeah, <laughs> That's yeah, crazy. it's crazy. So, um, I guess the next thing that I kind of had written down, um, and Lauren has something too, and I know he's gonna have fun with that one. <laughs> but uh, Wednesday, uh, Wednesday, you guys started this uh, Wednesday Hump Day, and uh, we've jumped in here and there, you know, um, trying to. Uh, support as much as we can, you know. Um, but how did that come about? So the we we've got a we've got a chat group, um, a group of guys and we kind of keep a chat window open on Facebook Messenger and we're always really we're always just shooting the shooting the breeze with each other, you know. Um, and there's a lot of this back and forth banter with one another. That's one thing I think makes this community pretty cool is, is, you know, we have fun with it and are able to joke with one another and it's, it's like real friendships, you know? And, um, we were all kind of talking about it like, man, you guys are funny. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and we said, man, this is about when the time StreamYard and different applications were you're starting to see it a lot more. We're like, man, we should do, you know, a live chat where we really just, get on and just, you know, shoot the breeze, but allow people in the comments 
because you can bring them in, you know, and bring them in and have them come in and chat. And that's what we started doing. Um, it's It's been, I think now we're doing it every other Wednesday. It's Eloy to Goat Flores. Um, I'm sure everybody probably knows Eloy, um, but he hosted on his channel. And it's myself, Eloy, uh, Dime Wild, and then whoever else wants to get in. And you know, s- some nights it's jumping. Some nights it's 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 kind of quiet. We did one for the first round of the NFL draft. Um, mm. right. That one was cool. Um, and I and I think one thing that will get neater is it opens up a lot of opportunities for, for something like the draft. So the Bengals were on the clock and there was a couple Bengals fans. <laughs> came, they came into the stream and they gave their spill on here's what the Bengals need. Here's what they did in the off season. And I mean, some of these guys, man, they know as much or more about their teams than you're going to see on <laughs> SPN or NFL network. So yeah. it's, it's pretty cool. Um, so that, yeah, we're doing that though. every other Wednesday. Um, I think typically we're around nine or nine thirty Eastern time that they do that. Yeah. So, <clears throat> yeah. If you keep an eye on Eloy, he can, he'll update when that's happening. Oh, yeah. he does. He does his Friday night auctions too. And uh, there's one night I, I deliver newspapers in the morning. So I, I fall asleep listening to Eloy's auctions sometimes and I'll wake up and my phone's still playing. <laughs> and uh i've jumped on there and uh uh one one night it's like two two o'clock in the morning alloy is still going and i'm like hey show some biking cards <laughs> and he shows him <laughs> and by that time it, it's it's thinned down pretty pretty well so he just shows me everything he's got in his box ready to go and i got to pick what i wanted and and i bought yeah, like, uh, <laughs> yeah his, his, his auctions are a marathon typically yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I know I've, I've fallen asleep listening to the Wednesday night uh, hump day thing. Uh, we were shooting uh, episodes on uh, draft, draft night, so couldn't jump in. Yeah, so as soon as it got over and Kevin walked out the door, I pretty much grabbed something to eat and passed out. Yeah. I didn't. Even, I I barely stayed awake enough to see the Vikings get their first pick, and they only we were picking a couple picks later. So I thought I was going to see that too. I was out. <laughs> and they, then they traded the pick, and they're like, "Oh, I fell asleep too before the second pick." Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know how great a promo this is for the Hump Day Hangout. I, <laughs> we had a guy that was live in one of the chat in one of the windows, you know, and he fell asleep. <laughs> 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 so we're all like, "Hey, wake up!" And he, oh, that's <laughs> funny. <clears throat> that um, was uh, that was pretty good. Yeah, ours is mostly uh, – well, Lauren gets up earlier than I do, but I'm up at 4.45 Central Time. So sometimes, you know, you guys are rolling till 11, 30, 12. I'm like, man, I'm an old dude, man. I can't be doing that. I got to get up I, in four hours. Yeah, I, I said, I said, man, you're on the East Coast, right? Those got to be kind of some rough nights for you. It's, oh, it's, really it's, they make fun of me. Um, so my YouTube name is Big D for Life. But a lot of the guys, they call me Big Z for a little bit, <laughs> um, because I have a tendency to check out uh, pretty early. And we went to uh, Nationals uh, in Cleveland two years ago. And <clears throat> this, the, here's the story. So myself and Bronx Bombers drove from North Carolina to Cleveland overnight, which was, I don't know, a 10-hour ride. It was a long ride. Yeah. We got into Cleveland (laughs) like, you know, seven in the morning. We couldn't check into our hotel until check. (laughs) So we kick around town, get something to eat. We check into the hotel. I'm like, dude, I got to take a nap. And, uh, you know, I drove too, by the way, I drove. (laughs) I took a nap and Bronx Bombers, Mike, he, he got some video of me sleeping, like snoring like a bear. And he posted it on YouTube or something. <laughs> yeah, that's how the big Z for life thing came about. So uh, that's funny. That's funny. <laughs> Lauren, did you want to touch on that? We're we're past Brett, that time frame, but we'll touch on that and then we'll wrap things up. Well, um, you know, I another one of my passions is music. So I really enjoyed doing doing the Mount uh, Rockmore that we did a couple weeks ago, and you you uh, commented that this was wasn't really your music 
Yeah. And, uh, whenever I was uh, 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 surfing your your channel, I came across your playlist. Oh. <laughs> so uh, where does more day and the time uh, land on your mount? Mount, uh, I don't know, a dance more. <laughs> well, uh, so you see, on on people are doing that thing now, like share the ten albums that heavily influenced you or something. And I've been trying, in case someone chooses me, I've been trying to do like this mental, like trying to remember. Because sometimes you'll see people post an album, like, "Yep, I, Prince, man, I, I was from the '80s, you know, and Prince, yeah. Purple Rain." And I don't know if you ever seen the movie Purple Rain. I mean, Chris is from Minnesota, right? Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. So you know, Morris Day and the Time played they they played a big part of that movie. And um, hey, man, I dig Morris. I I dig Morris Day and the Time, man. So Purple <laughs> Rain, you know, as an as an album, would be on my list. And and I will say the the music that you and Dustin were were talking about, and really just. Not just not just y'all were more of what talking about more what I would call like some thrasher heavy metal type stuff. I don't know if I'm classifying that correctly. Sorry if I'm not. I, I I'm not. I don't get big into he- it's rock and roll heavy metal. I don't get into all those other subgenres of it. It's all just new to me. I I missed a lot of rock and roll when I was in my twenties because I was listening to rap. And I completely missed out on this amazing genre of music. And, you know, as an adult, I mean, I still listen to a little rap here and there, um, but I'm kind of catching up on music that I missed, you know, because I was so focused on, on, on something else. So right. if, 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 you know, you got this deep Southern voice, you got the, you look, you look like you're, it looks like you would, you look like the kind of guy that would be at a NASCAR track and listen to Willie Nelson. So whenever you're watching your videos and you're listening to like CC Music Factory or something like that <laughs> in the background, it's yeah. it's uh, I find yeah. it's kind of fun. I, I'm I'm pretty diverse, you know, and yeah. I I think it, we've all been through different experiences and um yeah I I mean I I could do a NASCAR race. I went to see uh uh. Country boy can survive. Who sings that? Uh, oh, uh, Hank Williams. Yeah. I, to a, I've been to a Hank Williams Jr. concert, and I've been to see Cypress Hill. So yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm all over the place <laughs> for sure. Good, good music knows no boundaries, man. Yeah, that's true, man. I grew up in North Dakota, so I, I couldn't stand country music whenever I lived there because it's like every single town had a country country music station not every town had a rock and roll station so yeah uh, so I don't, I don't listen to country now i mean I, very seldom sometimes at work some of the guys i work with listen to country and they'll have it on so that's my exposure to country i don't i don't necessarily dislike it but yeah i i live in the south and i know i got that southern drawl and <laughs> yeah but yeah not a not a huge country music but I do. I'll listen to everything, and yeah. and I got an eleven year old son and seventeen year old daughter and a wife, and they all have very diverse and you know so get a little bit of everything. Right for sure. For sure. Well, I think um, we rolled past what we talked about, and we want to be uh, respectful of your time. But yeah. if you wanna, if you want to hang on for one second, we'll bring the episode to close. We'll just chit chat for another couple of seconds here. Um, that'll okay. be the episode, unless you have anything else. Last chat, I do, but oh, go ahead. I don't know. I don't know what I got. I I, <laughs> I got a. There's other stuff in here, but yeah, we're I'm good. We'll save it for next time. Yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll have you back there, Big D. Yeah, yeah. All right, so, man. I appreciate I appreciate y'all having me on. Appreciate the time. Yeah, hang on for one second, and we'll chat. Uh, episode 103 with Scott with Big D for Life. We'll bring it to a close. School Brothers out. <laughs> <laughs>